All right, we are here for the final round of this Interstate 84 draft. Um, yeah, we're going to choose to play first as usual. And the old double double snapcaster undead alchemist hand. Yep, we're not going to ship it. Let's hope to draw silent departures and spectral flights and all of our other good spells. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, opponent's back after, I can only assume, checking out my deck in the replays. I <laughs> uh, decided to keep his seven, and we are on our way. Haven't scouted any of my opponents out, so I'm going in blind. Let's see what colors he's playing, if he at all plays. Oh, come on, dude, let's go. Do, 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 do. There we go. Forests. Oh, and he's got a pilgrim. No guys to flame here, though. And where watch keeps pretty good. We have a turn three plan. Uh, could it be another white green aggro human deck? Yeah, looks like it. Silver Chase Fox, you got it. Question is do I chump the pilgrim with the snapcaster? I'm not going to, but um, I think you could certainly make a case there. I mean, if this is his only play on turn two when he has three mana, then, um, you know, it kind of stunts him from doing anything uh, bigger. <clears throat> and if he doesn't play a land here, well then, you know, maybe he's just land screwed. Um, next turn, playing the Undead Alchemist. We're hoping to draw some sweet stuff to to get our engine going as we have <laughs> in previous games, as you guys have seen. Uh, be it the Spectral Flight, Silent Departure, uh, whatever it's called, Nightbird Clutches, anything that just makes it so he can't block or um, we remove his guys is pretty good. So it looks like he did have the land. He's playing a 4-drop here. Olvenwald Mystics. Yeah, you got it. Ooh. Well... Tron assembled, kids. Tron assembled. So uh, we're gonna wait until he taps out his white, and then uh, we're gonna spectral flight up our <clears throat> excuse me, spectral flight up our silver uh, undead alchemist, and uh, get in one hit for six damage is pretty sweet. Tap out the white, please. Oh, don't bonds of faith. Tap out the white. Come on. Come on. Come on. Tap that. Oh, yeah, got there. All right. Time to get big, kids. Can't block it. Let's see how many triggers we get. Three effects. Looks like we hit a few creatures. We hit... Ooh, wow, he's got a lot of werewolves. We hit a Dark Thicket Wolf, Olvenwald Mystics, and a Villagers of Estwald. So that's pretty good for us. Uh, go ahead and lay out our Waif. And still have all these <laughs> snapcasters in hand. Almost looks like a constructed deck with uh, the land we have. Yeah, you can play your Kathar. Um, he has the Silver Chase Fox now, so definitely not attacking in here. Feral Ridge Wolf. So I guess problem is if I ever don't play a spell, his guy flips as well, and uh, his guy just eats mine pretty easily. Um, if I attack in with all these, he sacks the Silver Chase Fox, kills this. That trades with one of these. Trade, trade, trade. Hmm. Yeah, that doesn't seem very good. I'm just going to play the Feral Ridge Wolf and uh, pass the turn. So, I mean, his option is to do this at end of turn or just forever hold up two mana to uh, be able to use it at instant. Looks like he might be flooding out a little bit, though. I'm fine with you playing that. I um, think this next turn here, I'm just going to simply bash in with the Feral Ridge Wolf. <clears throat> really need these Snapcasters to do something, because right now they're just dirtling around. Deranged Assistant, sure. So I can pump this guy to a 5-2. Um... I mean, it trades with one of his guys, which is, you know, decent enough. I think I'm just going to do that. Uh, downside here is I don't play a spell. Both of our guys flip, so there's that. But next turn I can both uh, play both of these things out if I really need to. 
to uh, reflip our guys. And even this way, he's still taking a little bit of damage here. That's the only thing awkward about the uh, Undead Alchemist. <clears throat> you know, he, he doesn't do any damage, so... The fact of the matter that um, you can go at like two different routes, the mill route and getting infinite zombies and also the damage route is kind of awkward. Well, yeah, definitely not blocking here. There's no reason to take... Or, I mean, there's no reason to block. I can simply take the five damage easily. Ooh, that's a nice draw. So, I'm going to Silent Departure his Hal Pack. And I think he might have, um... Whatchamacallit? Um, Spider Grasp. So, I'm actually going to play the Snapcaster Mage. Flashing back the Silent Departure. And uh, bouncing the Olvenwald Mystics. Uh, this way, he has to sack the the Silver Chase Fox. <clears throat> um, that means he can't block with it. So he's gonna have two blockers for my infinite zombies, and I have a ton of stuff going on. So I mean, I guess if he has like Midnight Haunting, that's kind of awkward. But I think his game plan here is just to sack the Fox, kill the Spectral Flight. I guess chump two of the zombies, sack the Cathar, um, kill one of them and take 3, 8, 9, 10, two of it from zombies. Oh wow, even from the actually undead alchemist too, so he's gonna take, he's gonna be taking quite a bit. <laughs> like I guess if he has grasp, he's gonna do it here. Block the uh, undead alchemist and just simply straight up kill it. But even if that's the case, then he's taking eight damage um, and if he's not chumping these two, then he's gonna, you know, take a ton. So, all in all, he's in a pretty, pretty sticky situation. I mean, even if he has like a rebuke from an undead alchemist, then this is all just normal damage, and that's what two, four, six plus eight is fourteen. Fourteen regular damage coming out his way. So he's sitting in the tank. Oh, here we go. Okay, so he didn't use this prior to blocks, which leads me to believe he does have some kind of effect for my Undead Alchemist. Uh, hmm. Which is a little bit unfortunate. He's definitely going to pop the Cathar here. But he'll still take four regular damage. No, okay, he's changing it up. So, interesting. Yeah, so there's the Cathar. Um... Moment of here. Okay, so he's gonna take all the zombies. Wow. Okay, I'm actually fine with this. Um, interesting choice. Like, moment of heroism, killing my reckless. I don't even know. Let's. Like, what did we exile though? We got another, another werewolf and an unruly mob. Okay. Well, he bonds of faith our um, undead alchemist, but we still have. Four zombies, or sorry, five zombies here. <laughs> and we drew a spectral flight. Sure. Let's get big. Eh, what the hell. Attack with everything. The only thing that can effectively block for him is the villager's Vestwald. Everything else is just a straight up chumper trade. He has 11 cards left in deck. We're gonna mill him for four right off the bat. Yeah. Good game, kids. Good game. Alright, let's see what we mill. Another Dark Thicket. Oh, two Elvison's Pilgrims. So this guy has a ton of Pilgrims in his deck. Uh, he also has a Divine Reckoning, so we have to watch out for that. Yeah, this deck... Or his deck seems pretty sweet. I mean, only one travel prep, but... He has a lot of good buyback stuff. Creeping Renaissance, too. His deck's pretty good. I mean, <laughs> we assembled the combo again, so can't say too much there. Um, Rolling Temblor seems like a pretty big game against all of his, uh, you know, weenies and stuff. He does have a lot of um, werewolves that are that have three toughness, but 
I think the rolling tumbler is still going to be pretty good. Uh, I'm going to take the curiosity out here. Um, we haven't drawn it or used it to good effect ever, and I think the tumbler is going to be a little bit better. We'll see what happens. All right, he chose to play first. Yikes, this definitely needs an island. Oh, we have eight islands in our deck. We have one draw step. Eight, sixteen, twenty-four, thirty-two, about twenty-five percent chance. A little bit less. Hmm. We don't have much action otherwise. Okay, well, this is definitely a mulligan hand, but I'm going to keep it anyway, just because we're already up a game. I mean, he can really punish our starts, or I mean, our hand, because we know his, his deck is really fast. Hey. But we'll draw an island because we are, I don't want to say good, but <laughs> lucky enough. Oh, burning vengeance. Dude, we got there. We got there. Alright, so we have two flashback cards already. Burning Vengeance next turn is going to be pretty sweet. Um, hopefully we flip a Delver here. Or, sorry, not a Delver, a Silent Departure here. Yep, no blocks. Oh, he's got to play. So let's see a flip. Snapcaster Mage, it's pretty good still. Um, yeah, I think I just run out of the Burning Vengeance. I mean... There's not much. I could have silent departure, I suppose, beforehand, instead of playing the burning vengeance. But that's not using mana efficiently. And while it's still going to be a few turns before we actually get to use the burning vengeance, I think that was still the correct play. I mean, we're going to take a lot of damage in the next few turns here, but we should be okay. Um, I think what we really need to draw is an island. Not only will that be five mana for our pitch burn devils, but it'll allow us to play Snapcaster Mage and flash back the Sun Departure for uh, the one blue instead of <clears throat> instead of the five. So he's sitting in the tank now. This is only instants and sorceries, right? <laughs> I don't want. I could have revealed that if it wasn't. Yeah, instant sorcery. Who knew this little guy would be such a such a standard nuisance? Anyway, so I'm gonna pause it because he's in the. All right, so he played a planes and is coming in for four. Uh, yeah, I'm not gonna block again. No pump, so it looks like he... oh he has something to do. Oh, okay, so he simply letting his villagers flip. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna reveal my island. Because that is actually exactly what we wanted to draw. Pretty sweet. Um, I don't think we attack in here, do we? I didn't see a villagers. I didn't see... I didn't see Spidery Grasp. I didn't see Ambush Viper, I didn't see Midnight Haunt. Eh, well, we're going for it. Ah, I guess he does have the Midnight Haunting. Okay, well, if he wants to trade for Delver, I guess that's fine. Uh, not thrilled, but so be it. Next turn we have the option of either <clears throat> Silent Departuring or playing Pitchburn Devils. Either are very good options. Like, if he ever taps out his green, he loses his uh, Dark Thicket Wolf. Alright, so he's not going that route, apparently. Oh, he is. Okay, very nice. So we're going to bounce the villagers and kill the Dark Thicket Wolf here. Ooh, that's pretty big, too. Huh. No, this is definitely just the safest play. Get rid of two of his guys is <laughs> pretty good. Like, we're going to get hit two for two here, go to nine. He's going to probably play the villagers. We play the Pitchburn Devils, depending on what we draw. Uh, and then followed up with Undead Alchemist and Nightbird Clutches. Ooh, okay, so an Undead Alchemist. He attacks in. No blocks. 
God, but we know he has... No. Like, if he has Bonds of Faith, we're just in a bad position regardless. So, Pitchburn Devils is going to be the best best play for us. Okay, it does, looks like he doesn't have it. I think he would have played it on here. So, we'll take the one. He's not going to play anything. Um, I think that's interesting. I lay out the Alchemist. I guess I could play the Snapcaster Mage. But, I mean, being able to turn on any... Oh, we don't have many flashback spells. Or, sorry, we don't have many spells that don't have flashback. Instant or sorceries that are. Um, so I think the game plan is just to lay out the Snapcaster. Because we have the double Nightbird's Clutches anyway next turn. And that means not only do we get a Falter for creatures, we also get a Shoot one for two. So that's a pretty big game. Uh, I'm not sure why he's in the tank right now. Green-White isn't exactly known for having <laughs> many effects to this type of play. All right. And we'll just lay out the Snapcaster. No value, but hey, Flips is Werewolf. Yep, no spells. It's pretty good. Okay, so please, please dump out spells and lay out your hand. Or, I mean, tap out your mana. Because if he taps out his mana, he's just completely screwed here. Keep going, keep going. Yeah, get big. Yes! Oh, so good. We don't even need to flash it back. Oh, yeah, we do. Okay, well. Getting big. Flashing it back. Oh. I mean, yeah, we have to flash it back. And we're actually going to shoot his flyer, I think. Yeah, we're going to shoot his flyer. Hit in for four. Leave back the other guys, because right now we just want to get the zombies. So hopefully we can get pretty big here. You can't block. You can't block. Let's see how many triggers I get. What goes in his graveyard? Whoa, how did I do that? Did not want that to go there. Okay. Don't know why you're in the tank, buddy. You got nothing you can do. Gut shot. Do it. Gut shot twice. <laughs> do, 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 do. Gonna pause it again. Alright, he gave priority back to us, so let's see how many triggers we get here. Two, we got a Festerhide Boar and a Silver Chase Fox. So that's pretty good for us. Um, yeah, no reason to show him we have a land in hand. Alright, so now we got some nice chumpers, and he's kind of forced to stay back with at least a few guys, just because, you know, the, the looming threat of being able to keep <laughs> milling him out. And I guess it's pretty good we got one of the foxes, just in case he... Or we draw the Spectral Flight, or um, even getting rid of the Burning Vengeance is a little bit annoying. Alright, what does he got here? Another Kathar, maybe a Doom Traveler? Oh, he might just pass the turn. Okay, so he's passing the turn. Flipping his guys. Um, we don't have any spells to play at the moment. <laughs> oh, like clockwork. Um... So I'm actually going to pass the turn here. No, that can't be right. Shoot. I should have just Desperate Ravings twice at the beginning. You know, but the thing is, like, I could potentially draw Spectral Flight or something, but there's a lot of things he could have to blow us out. And uh, we didn't see many. I mean, he does have the Smite the Monstrous, but... I mean, if I had just Desperate Ravings and found, like, a... Uh, Sorry, silent departure then. You know, we were in good shape. So. Unless he has some effect, we already passed priority, so we're going to go into begin combat. Which means I can't do many things at the moment. <clears throat> um, keeping the mountain in my hand, just in case we draw two spells, there's a chance that we... or so that we don't ditch the... Uh, 
the spells and instead we just ditch like the mountain. Is he gonna attack? Yeah, I'm gonna chump. Uh, don't need the snapcaster. And I guess I'm gonna get rid of the pitch burn and uh, kill the Kathar. Actually, no, I'm just gonna kill the Halpak with the pitch burn trigger. I can kill the Kathar end of turn with the desperate ravings. Oh, I mean. Okay, so this is gonna die. I'm gonna target the Halpak, and he's probably gonna sack to save it. So it would have been just like I'm sacking to do a little damage to the uh, Kathar in the first place. This is fine. I mean, I think he has the Smite the Monstrous, which is a pretty big blowout. Oh, okay, so he let it happen. So maybe he just needs a blocker. This is interesting to me. Sure, tap out some more. No, okay. So I'm going to Desperate Ravings here. We discarded Scab Goliath and drew a hand where watch keep. And we'll do it again. Targeting the Kathar. And we drew a Tormented Priya and discarded a Mountain. So, didn't draw much, much action. Uh, let's, draw, let's just draw Silent Departure. Make it easy on me. Come on, buddy. This flips. Man, this guy. I still have 18 minutes, and this guy has six and a half. <sighs> Go back to pop. All right. Drew Spectral Flight. <laughs> okay, so... The only thing we get blown out by... Well, I guess there are two things now. Spider, Spidery Grasp and... Um, rebuke. So I think... I think I'm safe. Uh, question is, do I want to do it to un Undead Alchemist again and just go all in? Like, we didn't see a Spider Grasp, we didn't see Rebuke. All in, and still get it for four, though, right? Yeah, it seems like a pretty big game. Yeah, we're going to be safe. We're going to play it on our zombie token. Attack in this way. Alright, so this doesn't look like he has anything. And we only milled one Grizzled Outcast. But, uh... Now we have a big defender on the board. And now we have four zombies and one of them has flying, so... He might just lay out like a spl spider for no value. Oh, he has the Divine Reckoning! Ah, yes. Wasn't thinking there. Totally forgot about that. So, I could keep the 4-4 four, four flyer. I think I just keep the Undead Alchemist, though. Because I still have a creature in my hand. If he wants to attack, that's fine. I'll, I'll go down to 3 gladly. And I have a lot of outs to draw. And that's not one of them. So his guy doesn't flip still. He's going to replay some stuff. Blah, blah, blah. Sure. Ey, ey, ey. Not good for me. Like, it might even be better just to attack here. But I think that's the only way we're winning now. Since um, he's still at 20. So we have to chump the crawling, crawling horde. Oh. Okay, interesting. So he's... Well, so now I have to chump block both. I was going to say, if he had just Divine Reckoning, then, you know, I lose both my creatures, but whatever, this works. Hmm, I knew better, too. I should not have played the Hanwar Watchkeep. We knew he had the Divine Reckoning. So that was maybe not a punt on my part, but definitely poor play. I mean, it looks like we weren't drawing anything for a while anyway. Um, <laughs> I guess I take out the Rolling Templar again. It, it wasn't going to do anything, I guess. Not as much as I had hoped, at least. Um, ch -ch 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 -ch. Sensory deprivation's pretty good. 
Fortress Crab is... Yeah, Fortress Crab it is. Another random dude's fine. I feel like I messed that game up, but... Hmm. Couldn't have known, I suppose. Um... Curse? Mm, no. We'll roll like this. And we'll see you back for the final game of the finals. Alright, here we are for the finals of this 8-4, round 3, game 3. All comes down to the wire. We're going to choose to play first per usual. Uh, hmm. Five land, but definitely can't mull this. Uh, backup game plan is timing him out. <laughs> Five and a half minutes to our 15 and a half. Hmm. Well, this is not the kind of action we wanted, but this is going to have to do, I suppose. <clears throat> No pilgrim. Oh, he's got the pilgrim. Ooh, okay. One piece of our combo assembled. Spectral flight. Yeah, hey, uh, not exactly what we wanted to draw. Um, yeah, I'm gonna attack him here. Uh, I don't really need the assistant. I mean, it's fine in our deck. We have whatever six or seven flashback spells. But the only thing that costs a lot of mana in our deck is the um, Scab Goliath, and that's at 6. And while it does want creatures in the yard, oh, he's got the... okay, never mind. So this is fine, this puts a guy in our yard. We lay out the watch keep. And from here on out, it's basically just us saying, draw, go. Drew a Fortress Crab. Sure. Um, I'm not liking, liking our position very much at all. Uh, he still has five cards in hand, and we have kind of dirtily cards, as in <laughs> land and spectral flight. Um, let's see. Forbidden alchemy would, would be good. I don't think we've drawn that all, all event. Yeah, I don't think we've drawn it once in this event, so that's kind of weird. I guess it makes up for us drawing the <laughs> Undead Alchemist in Spectral Flight almost every time. So, I think his game plan here might just be a attack and pass the turn, because if our watch keep flips, it has to attack, and that'll flip his Mystics as well, and I think he probably just wants to eat our guy. But little does he know, we have Spectral Flight. And Ashmouth Hound, yeah! But yeah, we're just going to get big with Spectral Flight, hope he doesn't have the uh, Smite the Monstrous. Fast effects? Response? Nope. Getting big! Alright, he doesn't have an effect either. Nice. Um, not gonna play the Hashmouth Hound there. Ashmouth Hound, rather. Uh, because that would have been the second spell. Yep. Crab is insta blocking. Don't know what you have. Apparently nothing. Oh boy. He's got no fly. Oh, two spells, never mind. So, what are our options here? I think just passing is pretty pretty good. I mean, the problem is... See, his guys flip. So does mine. I mean, the Grizzled Outcast is going to come in. I think, I think I might be forced to trade the Watchkeep for the Grizzled Outcast. No, that can't be right. He's dead, to, he's dead in two turns, the Watchkeep. And we have at least another Chumper. And the Fortress Crab can block the Mystics all day. So, I'm going to take one hit from the Crawling Horde, at least. Uh, he might have two spells, though. Yep, I'll take seven. I think this is the best play for us here. We'll see if he's got the two spells. And we have so many live outs that we can draw. <clears throat> Assuming he doesn't have two spells. <laughs> Even if he does have two spells, we're pretty good. Alright. Five mana. What do we got? Another mystic. Oh, two spells. Okay. So he has a ton of creatures, unfortunately. And that is not one of our outs, as it were. Looks like we're pretty dead here. 
Uh, just overran with random dirtles. Hmm. That's too bad. I mean, our deck, our deck wasn't great, but <laughs> it could certainly get there. I don't know. Maybe I should have molded it. I guess I probably should have. I mean, Deranged Assistant and Hanware Watchkeep aren't really doing much. Like, if he just passes the turn here, we're pretty in a pretty bad position. Because uh, this is going to flip. We have to attack, and then he's going to have a 5-5, five, five, a 7-7, seven, seven, and another 7-7. Seven, seven. In addition to his 4-4 four, four Dark Thicket Wolf, etc. So, what's he doing here? If he swings with all... If he swings like this, then the Handwear Watchkeep is going to eat the Mystic. Grizzled Outcast will chump the Outcast. Or sorry, Fortress Crab will chump the Outcast. And the Ashmouth Hound is going to eat the Pilgrim. I'm going to take 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Ooh. He should have definitely attacked with the Spirit there. That was a mistake by him. God, am I forced to block the Grizzled Outcast? I almost am, aren't I? It's kind of awkward. I mean, I block like this. I eat two of his dudes. I still have all three of mine. He has one, two, three, four guys. Yeah, I have to draw. I have to draw something. I have to draw... Oh, what's it called? Silent Departure. Alright. Silent Departure, you're my out. Show me, please. <laughs> oh, what a draw, kid. What a draw. Okay, so... Oh, it doesn't even matter. We're just dead, aren't we? No, we aren't just dead. What am I talking about? This is sweet. So we have to silent departure to the, one of the Crowlin Hordes. Uh, silent departure the other. This shoots down that guy. Attack for seven. Eight, nine, ten. Yeah, seven. <laughs> Big game, kids. Big game. He can only play one of his guys now. Four, five. Just play them. Play the. Ooh, okay. Well, that's pretty awkward. I have to keep the fortress crab. Yep, I have to keep the fortress crab. Okay. Well, we're still drawing live. But we have to get pretty lucky. Alrighty, that's definitely not what we needed. So he gets to play one of his Grizzled Outcasts. Oh, and in addition to a Silver Chase? Okay, so now we have to draw our other spider spawning. Come on, big time. Snapcaster 4. Oh, Snapcaster, why can't you do something better? If only, if only. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we were very close. But we couldn't quite get there. Unfortunately, our deck was... Or, I mean, our draw was a little bit too slow. Um, but hey, overall we had a pretty good run. I mean, second place and two Snapcaster Mages. So yeah, uh, thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you guys next time.